you've asked for it and here it is an update on the 10 gallon nano sps bomb What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of Real Reefing TV where I help you save time, money, and frustration in the real reefing hobby, sharing my experiences and knowledge. And if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing. There's new videos coming out each and every week. And if you're not already, follow me on Facebook and Instagram. You can follow along a little bit more closely and connect with me. Send me messages, keep me updated on how things are going for you. And today, I'm giving you guys what you've been asking for which is an update to the 10 gallon nano SPS bomb. Just a quick recap for you. This is an innovative marine, <laughs> stupid name is so long. This is an innovative marine nano fusion 10 Nuvo, Nuvo, Nuvo fusion, Nuvo 10 fusion, 10 Nuvo. I don't know, the, this, the, the name is way too long in my opinion, so I'm just gonna throw a link in the description below, you can go check it out. On top here is a uh, AI Prime HD, um, it's an LED light, as well as the mounting bracket that it has on it. I've upgraded the pump to a J-Bow pump, I can't remember the exact one right now, so I'm gonna throw that in the description below as well, so you can check that out, however, I would not recommend buying that pump for this tank. I had to modify that pump actually, and um, and like cut the inlet off of you know the, the the part where you have to screw on. I had to cut that off of it, and then I had to take the the base off of it, and it, it it fit finally. But I would just recommend not getting that one. Innovator Marine makes another like an upgraded DC pump specifically for this tank, so I would just recommend going that route. Now this tank is not gonna run a skimmer. It's gonna run all just by water changes. So in this tank, I used dry rock and started there. I did a bleach cure on that rock and, um, and then did a regular cure for quite a while. Got it in here and got it wet. This is a bare bottom tank, so there will be no sand. And if you've ever been to like worldwide corals down in Orlando here in Florida, they do a bare bottom in almost all of their displays and they look spectacular because they do a great job of basically making the sand bed colorful, right? And they just use corals to cover the, the bottom of the tank. And I think that's just a, such a great idea. I love packing the tank full of corals anyways and why not use up that real estate for something visually appealing? Now, some people love you know, the sand for wrasses and for gobies and stuff like that, but for me, it just wasn't necessary. Now I have added two fish so far. Um, the there is a Miss Bar, um, an extreme Miss Bar Mocha Clown in here, and as well as I just picked up um, not too long ago a yellow Clown Goby, and so he's just kind of getting acclimated to the tank here and starting to. Uh, starting to pick up on some foods. He spits most of them back out, but he's starting to eat um, little bits here and there, so it's looking good. The clownfish, his name is Omen. My son named him Omen, and that's Nemo, spelled backwards. And the clown Gobi, um, his name is, I'll have to ask my son later, he named it too. You know what, I'll put that in the comments when I remember what, that, what the name of that one is. I've got four corals in here, um, and I may have went a little bit too fast too soon with the corals. As I told you guys, this is going to be an SPS bomb of a tank, so it's only going to have SPS corals in there. Monoporas, Acroporas, Millies, um, you, you name it, if it's a SPS, it's going to be in here. And I want to just do really bright, colorful ones. It doesn't have to be the most expensive ones, although I do want to have really choice pieces in here since it's such a small tank, but I want it to be very colorful. So I'm mindful of the different types of corals that I put in here. And if it ends up being something that's not colorful, I'll put it in the 300. But I went too fast too soon. And what I mean by that is that um, I, I think that this thing wasn't quite done maturing yet, even though it's been wet for four months now, I still don't think it's ready. Um, 
and uh, and I can tell now because now I'm starting to get the diatom uh, bloom in there, and that's starting to get knocked down. Um, I have two zebra snails in here that are pretty dope, and if you if you're not following me on Instagram, you should be. But if you are, you know that just a couple nights ago, the one zebra snail got out, climbed up the side of the glass, up over down there's a trail right here where there's a little turbo foot booked it right down the side of this desk and was sitting in the middle of the floor my wife were in here my wife and i were in this office just sitting here i was you know watching the tank and we were talking and she's like is that a snail I'm like where right there is that a snail i'm like i don't know what you're talking no i don't i don't see a snail and she picks it up and it's literally that snail and they're not very big i picked up small ones because it's a small tank and she was like, yeah, it's in there still. And I'm like, what? So she, she puts it back in the tank. She's just holding it in there. And little dude starts coming out. And uh, yeah, sure enough, he's good to go. He's in there turboing around. So yeah, I've got a snail named Turbo now. And uh, and he's pretty legit. So uh, that's I've got two snails in there, by the way, though. Only one's named Turbo because he's only daring. It's the only one daring enough to make an escape from the tank. I thought it would be fish jumping out. It's a snail. Anyways, um, and and now, so as I told you, and I'm all over the place. The corals, I went a little bit too fast too soon, and so they're kind of uh, um, stressed, and they're losing some of their zooxanthellae. That's the symbiotic algae within their tissue that presents the colors that we see in corals. So right now they are not, um, they're not looking so hot. They're pretty pale. One of them's white, but still has polyps. So I know it's still alive and they're actually still kind of like growing. It's weird, but they're, so they're okay, but they're definitely stressed. And so I lowered the lights, brought the light, um, intensity down and that'll help out a little bit with the stress. And, um, and I'm just keeping everything as stable as possible. I am running automatic water changes with my Auto Aqua automatic water change system. So that's running flawlessly and, um, and keeping some of the water replaced and uh, replenished in this thing. Also have the auto top off being handled by that auto water change system as well. Now I wanted to take this opportunity and if you've seen this thing dangling from the tank here, I wanted to take this opportunity to share with you a little bit about the par that this light produces. It was something that was kind of interesting to me. I was like, well, I turned them down. Well, I don't really know what kind of light that's actually producing in this tank. And neither will you if you don't have a PAR meter. And so this one helps me do that. This is the Sinai, uh, the Sinai Reef. And it actually can, can read PAR in a tank and give you a Kelvin temperature as well. And so I'll be able to tell you um, exactly what kind of PAR this thing is getting in the tank. So I want to show you a little bit about how it works. It's very easy to use. And I know I've done a video on this on the lighting of the 300, but it's very easy to use. Once you have the app downloaded, then you just basically plug it into the USB port of your computer. And then you can, then you can take this, um, then you can take this lead right here. It has the sensor on the top of it. If you can see it, it's kind of blinking red here. And that is what gives you your reading. That's what reads the light within um, that, that's being produced from the light. So one thing that you wanna do when you're reading PAR or using a PAR meter is make sure that that sensor is completely uh, flush and facing the light. So if it's facing away or if you have it tilted the wrong way, you're not gonna be getting an accurate reading from the meter. So the reading can only be as good as the operator operates the uh, the device. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get it in here and I have a couple of placements where Corals is. There's a ridge right here. So we'll read right there. We'll read at the top and then I wanna read at the glass bottom and see what kind of reading I'm getting there. Remember, I'm gonna be placing Corals on the glass. So it's important and they'll all be SPS. So it's important that that reads um, well enough to be able to take care of the needs of SPS corals. So for SPS corals, we want to have anywhere from 200 to 350 par. That's what we're looking for. So ideally, right up here at the top, we would be looking for 350. Right down here at the bottom, we would be okay with seeing 
200. Or it would be even better if we could get a more distributed light that would have a more even par all the way across the tank in all sections of the tank. So if I could get, say, 300 at the top, the middle, and the bottom, that would be absolutely peaches. But I doubt that's going to happen. That's really not the way that it works. So we'll go ahead and get this in there. I want to show you some of the readings that we're going to get. And you should be able to see them right over here. This section right here is where you're going to see the par. So let's get this in here and let's take a couple readings. Now what I'm also going to do is I'm going to use my phone in the My AI app to go ahead and control the light and see what kind of temperatures I'm getting or what kind of intensity I'm getting par that I'm getting from this light at 100% or at 50% at the different levels. So first thing I'm going to do is position the lead exactly where I want it to be. So I'm going to put it right here on the top facing, make sure it's flush. See how it's at a 90 degree angle. And then I'm going to go ahead and put this at 100%. And let's see what we get. So we're going to see real quick, it's going to jump up there and I'm receiving about 500 par right there at the very top. So now let's go ahead and look right here down in the center of the tank. So again, we'll get the app out. We'll go ahead and tap it to 100% there at 20K. And we're getting about 250 to 300. And then again, down at the, down at the bottom of the tank, right at the very, right at the very bottom. And again, we'll go ahead and do that for 100%. So about 220 to 250, we'll call it, right at the very bottom. And then I've done this before, so it, that's about um, what it is all the way around. So as you can see, this light has the capability of growing anything on this tank, right? If you had a 20 gallon, maybe you had the, the Innovative Marine Nouveau 20, maybe you would wanna have two of these if you're gonna try to grow SPS, you know, something along those lines. But this light in this tank, the way that it's built, um, the size of it, this this light can grow anything you want to put under it, really can. And so I'm confident that I'll be able to grow premium SPS with just one AI Prime HD. I'm really excited to see where this tank goes and the challenges that are going to come along with having a small tank. Um, but I'm also really optimistic that I'm going to be able to grow really awesome SPS corals in here. That's it for this week, guys. Thanks so much for watching. If you want to check out my latest video, you can hit it right over here. And if you're not subscribed already, hit that subscribe button right here. Thanks for watching, y'all. Keep it salty. Keep it locked. What? Peace. Uh.